Hey there, I'm Dr. Kristen Adorno. I'm an emergency physician at Cooper University Hospital, and today we're going to be reviewing your basic pathology on your bedside cardiac ultrasound. Now, if you haven't yet already, I do want you to go back and watch the other video first on your basic windows of your cardiac ultrasound so you have an understanding of the anatomy we're going to be discussing right now. So as we alluded to in the last video, there's three main questions that we try to answer on your focused bedside cardiac ultrasound. The first question is, what is the ejection fraction? So is the heart squeezing normally, or does it have a depressed ejection fraction? Second, we look for effusion. So namely, is there a pericardial effusion or fluid around the heart? Thirdly, we assess for equality. So we look at the difference between the right and left ventricle, which could be an indicator of right heart strain. So let's dive right into it. When we look at ejection fraction, we're really just looking at how well the heart is squeezing. So as a refresher from that last video, a little spaced repetition, we'll just go through what we're looking at again one more time. So this heart on the left side of the screen is going to be a parasternal long axis view of a heart with a normal ejection fraction. So your parasternal long axis view is that view where you have your probe at a diagonal plane to the left side of the sternum with your probe marker facing down towards the apex of the heart. That'll be on this side of the screen. And then you have this side of the screen pointing towards the base of the heart. Up to the top of the screen here is closest to your probe, most superficial. And then as you go down into the image, this is all deeper into the body. And here's just indicators of your depth here. This is around five centimeters deep and 10 centimeters deep here. So your basic anatomy. So this is a, the long axis view of the heart kind of cutting across us. So you see most of the chambers in this long axis. So this is your left atrium here. This is your mitral valve. Here's your left ventricle here, your aortic valve and your aortic outflow tract here. Then this most superficial structure is going to be your right ventricle, and back here is your descending aorta. So when you're assessing for ejection fraction, I really want your eyes to focus on the left ventricle here. What I like to do is kind of draw an imaginary line in the middle of the ventricle and picture how close the walls of the ventricle are coming towards the middle of that line to see how well the chamber is kind of emptying during systole. Normal ejection fraction is around 60%, so that's just kind of where you want to gear your eye towards. The numbers are not important, especially for the focus of this video right now. This is really a qualitative assessment of does this heart look roughly normal or is it roughly depressed? So first I look at the ventricle like we discussed, and then I look at the mitral valve and I try and look at this anterior leaflet and see how close it's coming to the septum here. Normally it should come quite close to the septum. That's a good indicator of a normal ejection fraction. And this will become more obvious right now when I show you the second heart here and you compare kind of the squeeze between these two hearts in the screen. So again, this is another parasternal long axis view. And I want you to kind of draw that imaginary line in the middle of that left ventricle. And you can see how the walls of this ventricle are not coming anywhere close to that imaginary line in the middle like it is on this heart on this left side of the screen. And then you can also appreciate that the anterior leaflet of this mitral valve really is not coming anywhere near the septum either compared to this healthy one that's coming close to the septum over here. So just take a moment and appreciate the difference between these two hearts, how this left ventricle is squeezing quite well, and this one is really not so much, and this heart on the right side of the screen has a reduced ejection fraction. You can assess for ejection fraction in most views of your point of care cardiac ultrasound. I think your parasternal short axis view is also a pretty good view to assess for this as well. So to remind you, your parasternal short axis view is going to be obtained when you start with that long axis we just had, and then you rotate your probe 90 degrees. So now we're cutting across the heart in a short axis. And this is nice because we're seeing the left ventricle right here, nice and big, and the right ventricle right here. This is at the level of the papillary muscles, which is what you're seeing here right near the mitral valve. So here what you can kind of picture is picture putting your finger in the center of this left ventricle and seeing how well the walls come in towards that center to see kind of how well it's squeezing. And this, on the left side of the screen, this heart is, has a normal ejection fraction because you can see that the walls are coming reasonably close to the middle of the screen, and this is normal. As opposed to this heart on the right side of the screen, same cut, this is your parasternal short axis view, here's your left ventricle, and here's your right ventricle over here, and we're here, we're at the level of the papillary muscles. And again, if you picture putting your finger in the middle of this ventricle, you'll see that the walls are really not coming anywhere close to it, and this is certainly a heart with a reduced ejection fraction. So now let's look at your apical four chamber view. So to orient you again, this is where you put your probe at the apex of the heart. 
and your probe marker is going to be facing towards the patient's right, which is standard convention. And that'll be this side of the screen, and over here is patient's left. So then this is your left atrium here. This is your left ventricle. Here's your mitral valve in the middle there. Here's your right atrium over here, your tricuspid valve, and your right ventricle. So again, we're really when we're looking for ejection fraction, I want you to just focus on this left ventricle here and envision this imaginary line right in the middle of the ventricle and try and assess how well the walls are coming towards that middle. And you can see here that the walls are coming reasonably close to the middle of the ventricle here and that this is a heart with a normal ejection fraction. As opposed to this heart now on the right side of the screen, it's the same your apical four chamber view, and this is your left ventricle right here. And then you're going to imagine that line right in the middle, and you can see that the walls really are not coming close to the center of the, of the ventricle, and that this is a heart with a reduced ejection fraction. So now let's move on to pericardial effusion. So how do we assess for effusion? Now a pericardial effusion is fluid that accumulates in the pericardial sac around the heart. So the pericardial sac, if you remember from basic anatomy, has two layers to it that are usually adhered together unless there's fluid in between it that separates kind of in that space. Now, what can cause a pericardial effusion? A lot of things. So trauma, malignancy, infection, inflammation. The focus of this lecture today is not really to say what caused it, it's just to identify what it looks like in ultrasound. And fortunately for us, all fluid generally looks anechoic or black on ultrasound. So we're gonna be looking for black stripes. So you see here that the blood inside the heart, blood is also fluid, which is black, anechoic, meaning no echoes. And so the blood in the heart will look the same as the blood outside the heart. So what we're looking for is black lines kind of outside your heart here. So this is your parasternal long axis view, and this is your normal view that we just had in the last couple slides. So here's your left atrium, your left ventricle, your aortic outflow tract, and your right ventricle. And now when we're looking for an effusion, we want to look outside the heart in that pericardium for that black line, that black fluid. So we'd be looking anteriorly here for any black stripes, and then we look posteriorly here if there's any sort of circumferential effusion, we would see it back here, which we don't see fluid in either space here, so I'd say this heart on the left side of the screen does not have a pericardial effusion. Then we look at this heart on the right side of the screen, which you'll notice looks very different from the one on the left. Now this is actually also a parasternal long axis view. It just looks a bit different because there's a large pericardial effusion around this heart. So to orient you here again, we do still have that same view of here's your left atrium, your left ventricle, your aortic outflow tract, and your right ventricle here. But here outside the heart, this is your pericardium, and this is a large pericardial effusion, a large amount of fluid right around your heart. That's making it a very kind of pronounced looking heart in this view. So this is what a large effusion looks like. We can also assess for effusions in your apical four-chamber view. So again, here's your four chambers. We have our probe going in at the apex of the heart. Here's your left atrium here, your left ventricle, your right atrium, and your right ventricle. And again, when we look for effusion, we're really just looking at the outside of the heart. So we're looking anteriorly here. Do we see like a black stripe or fluid anteriorly? And then we look all the way around the heart for any sort of black stripes, seeing if there's any sort of circumferential pericardial effusion, which I do not see in this heart on the left side of the screen. This is in sharp contrast to the heart on the right side of the screen, which is the same study from the last slide. So this is the same patient with this very large pericardial effusion, just looking at it from a different window. So this is again your apical four chamber view. And you do see your four chambers here, your left atrium, your left ventricle, your right atrium, and your right ventricle. But you'll notice that this scan looks a lot different from the one on the left side of the screen because now we can appreciate this large pericardial effusion all the way around the heart here circumferentially. The subsiphoid view is actually a really nice view to assess for pericardial effusion because the probe is coming in at the dependent portion of the heart, so it's actually quite sensitive looking for effusion. So how do we get our subsiphoid view? Just to remind you from that last lecture, this is where you're going to take your probe really in the upper part of the patient's belly, and you're going to be angling it toward the patient's left shoulder so that you're cutting through the liver to get to the heart. And you're going to have it at a pretty flat angle, so you're going under the xiphoid process to get to the heart. And to kind of remind you of some anatomy, so here's your liver up here, most superficially. And then back here you have your left atrium, your left ventricle, your right atrium, and your right ventricle, kind of coming in and out of plane. 
But what we're really focusing on this particular view when we're looking for effusion is, again, just the outside of the heart. So between the liver and the heart here, this is where we'd expect to see that black sliver if there were any effusion, pericardial effusion or fluid around the heart. Then we focus our eye posteriorly to see if there's any circumferential effusion or fluid around the heart over here. So we look all the way around the heart and we don't see any black stripes, so we say there's no pericardial effusion on this heart on the left side of the screen. Then we look at this heart on the right side of the screen. This is same, your sub xiphoid view. We have our liver here and then our heart here. And now we're training our eyes again to look around the heart in its pericardial sac. And here we do see a pericardial effusion. We see this black stuff all the way around the heart. So this is circumferential pericardial effusion. So lastly, let's assess for equality. So what equality is, is really comparing the left and right ventricles. Normally, your left ventricle should be larger than your right ventricle. Your right ventricle should be about 60% of what your left ventricle is, kind of in a cross-section if you measured it right at the level of the valves here. And this makes sense if you think of physiology of what the heart does. So your left heart is going to be pumping blood to really your entire body, while your right heart is a lower pressure system and just pumping blood to your lungs. Sometimes you can see dilation of the right ventricle, which is usually an indicator of strain on the right side of the heart. And what can cause this, right? So in an acute setting, we always worry about pulmonary emboli causing a real large increase in pressure in the pulmonary circulation that's backing up and causing dilation of your right ventricle. This can also happen chronically in people with severe long-standing lung disease like COPD that over time can cause dilation of the right ventricle. The acute or chronic thing is not important to us right now, and it's really more based on clinical scenario. What I really want you to appreciate here is just the difference between the left and right ventricles. So your apical four chamber view is a really nice view to assess for the difference because you can really compare the full diameter of both the left and right ventricles. And so you generally can just eyeball and see that the left ventricle is larger than the right ventricle. You don't always have to make precise measurements, but you can appreciate here that your left ventricle is larger than your right, and so this is a heart with normal equality. Now, this is in difference to the heart on the right side of the screen. And again, this is your apical four-chamber view. Not the greatest window, but you can still appreciate here that this is your left atrium, your left ventricle, your right atrium, your right ventricle. And when you see the free walls coming in and out of plane here, you can assess for the diameter here. So you can look across here. This is your diameter of your left ventricle. And then you see it's actually much smaller than your right ventricle here, which, as we just discussed, is not normal. Your left ventricle should always be bigger. So when your right ventricle looks larger than your left ventricle, that is not normal. So this is definitely a heart with a dilated right ventricle and abnormal equality. You can also assess for this in your parasternal short axis view, which again, you're doing a cross section really of the heart. You're looking at the left ventricle here and the right ventricle here. And this is a heart with a normal equality. So you see a nice round, large left ventricle, and then the right ventricle is appreciably much smaller right on the outside here. This is in contrast to this heart where you see that the left ventricle really actually looks smaller and flattened and the right ventricle is really taking over here and is appreciably larger than the left ventricle. This flattening of the septum, we actually have a word for it. We call it a D sign because you can appreciate that the septum is kind of flat, like the long side of a D, and then this is kind of a D on its side and round. And this is also an indicator of abnormal equality in a dilated right side of the heart and right heart strain. So that's actually all I've got for basic pathology for today. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. You can email me at adorno-kristen at cooperhealth.edu. Thank you, and happy scanning.